Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Avorian episode 2. I'm Enigmius and today, Babby's first ship. That's right, we're building our first ship in Avorian. The first episode, last episode, we were just kind of messing around with different shapes and the build system in general to kind of get a feel for things. Start our way through that learning curve and getting a handle on the way this game does things differently from other games, etc, etc. And I didn't actually have, at that time, any real ideas in mind for what my first actual ship build might be. But then I came up with an idea and I decided there was no time like the present uh, than to proceed with it right now, getting after it. Uh, the ship is going to be called Spirit, and the reason for that is because the idea rolling around in my head is that the ship would be the spirit of a muscle car. For some reason, when I think back to all of the things that I've built in the various different voxel-based games that I've played, I can't escape the notion that I've done this theme for a build before, um, which is a little bit odd considering I'm not what I would consider to be a car guy uh, and never have been, but at the same time, there have been certain vehicle designs uh, that I've come across in the muscle car department where I've just been sort of astounded at the way the, the design is evocative. It makes you think of things... Um, that are more than the sum of the design's parts. So you you get a, a classic sort of muscle car design and you look at it and it's got sort of that brutal elegance where the lines just flow and it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's literally art on wheels with an engine and a transmission. Um, but because of th that artistry, um, you, you get that sense. It's more than just a bunch of shapes. It's, it's, conveying some sort of meaning above and beyond that that brutal sort of sense and a lot of it with the classic designs where they have the front quarter panels sort of have their own profile independently of the front hood and grill and you get that sense that it's like big beefy shoulders pushed forward on the the chassis of the car it's just it's a thing and i don't necessarily expect uh, anyone to follow what i'm saying uh, with avid enthusiasm but hopefully at least some of you get the idea of what I'm talking about. So, Spirit of the Muscle Car, hence the name of the ship is Spirit. Um, there are certain things that we don't need to have on a spaceship, of course, like wheels and wheel wells. <laughs> so we won't be building those into it. Um, but there are a lot of other things that we can incorporate that will be very, very similar uh, and very, very familiar in terms of that design. And some of you, uh, looking at what we've got so far, have already sort of figured out we've got sort of like the center part of the hood coming down to the grill area and ending sort of at the bumper the front bumper of the vehicle and we're just kind of working our way out to the side now very key in this sort of situation and similar to what i've done with a lot of other builds but i find that with this build system it's much more pronounced um, and i'm just kind of more drawn to it is this idea of working in strips so we're not trying to build everything all at once i have an idea in my head of the way i want things to look and then I sort of like cut it into strips, manageable little strips that we can work with. They're a consistent width. All the blocks in one strip are all the same width sort of thing. And we can adjust the width of a particular strip to match the kind of profile that we're working with. So right now, with the hood and the front section, the front grill, so to speak, they're not really abrupt transitions they're very soft flowing curves and we don't have to worry too much about making radical adjustments to the direction that anything is going so we can do wide strips accomplish more relatively speaking with the, the size that we're working with and then when we get to the more um abrupt or acute adjustments of the angles and the directions and the profiles we work with smaller strips just so that we can pull that off and get everything set up the way that we want it to. And that'll be a theme that you'll see basically throughout this episode is everything will be done in strips. And we're just kind of working out the mechanics of putting everything together. We've got a pretty good idea of how we, we've got the match system and we've got the mirror system and we've got the stretching of the blocks and all these different things to come together to allow us to build more quickly than if we had to make all of these adjustments manually for each block in every position, I, that would drive me nuts. I don't, I don't think I would be able to pull that off. 
But one of the things that I discovered as I progressed through this um, episode's content and during the building was that the farther away I got from the center, the more narrow the strips became and the more complex the profiles became, the less the game seemed to want to cooperate with me in terms of uh, doing what I was expecting it to do. And it was one of those cases with the user perspective where they feel like they're doing what they've always been doing, but they're suddenly for whatever reason not getting the results that they're accustomed to getting. And it's very easy to jump to the conclusion that there's something wrong with the game. And that's why we're not getting the results that we're getting. But one of the things that I discovered, you can see basically what we're placing now are the external blocks that define this outside profile and the shape of the ship from the outside. And then you'll also see that I'm putting blocks in behind those. When I started doing this ship, um, like I said, we had wide strips, we had very simple curves, things that we were working on. It wasn't complex, it was very straightforward. And I was placing blocks in behind the exterior blocks so that I would have something to attach the next block to, but it wasn't difficult to figure out. It was just put the blocks in behind and Bob's your uncle, it's, it's done, it's taken care of. When we get to the more complex areas, I was doing the same thing. You can see I'm doing it now, I'm putting these blocks in place, but you'll notice I'm placing them big blocks, filling in big sections at a time. And then when you're using the match feature to try and come along and place the blocks on top of those, it's trying to match these big chunky sections. Uh, and when it can't do that, it doesn't know what to do. It basically, it can't help me, but I'm expecting it to help me because I'm doing what I've been doing the whole time and it doesn't work. So I figured out that there's a lot to be said for the planning not just of the external blocks that define those shapes, but also the backer blocks, as I put them, the structural elements in behind those that we need in order to be able to attach everything to everything. And when I do those right, everything works. Doesn't matter how complex the shape is, everything just comes together. It's just gonna be practice to get that thing right on a consistent basis not necessarily uh, going to be fast. There, there's definitely a learning curve to it, but at least I have a goal now that puts me in charge of the process. Again, I'm not blaming anyone for the fact that it's not working the way I expect it to. I'm looking forward to the opportunity to develop the skills and the understanding so that it's no longer a problem in the future. That's sort of the thing. Another thing that I was looking at, speaking of learning curves, is if you look at the front grill section, it's got kind of a smile to it. It's got some creases on there that are in the shape of a smile. And I was looking at that and I was thinking, it's not that big of a deal. Um, again, the, the shapes that we're able to create uh, that are smooth and fairly elegant, when we, when we encounter an issue like that where we've got certain seams coming together and producing lines and shapes that we didn't necessarily have in mind, but they're pretty subtle, it's not that big of a deal, but I bet you there's going to be a time when we'll be able to build things at such a re resolution just from habit and the blocks that we select and the way we set everything up, the way we place the backer blocks and things of that nature, that even those kinds of unintended creases and similar shapes won't be as much of an issue anymore. If you think 30, 40, 50 episodes from now, based on the experience that we get along the way, I kind of feel pretty confident that we're going to have uh, the ability to produce even more refined shapes and contours, which I think is pretty cool. So we've got this hood is just about done now. And I'm using the car terms just because I, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, I think it's easier to understand using those terms uh, for now. But we have the hood is basically done. And then we've got the option to just make the transition to the quarter panels kind of seamless, like a lot of newer cars, where it's just all one flat piece with the curves that it has, and then transitions down around to the sides for the quarter panels. Or we could go the other way, and like I was talking about this whole idea of these shoulders, these big beefy shoulders kind of pushed forward on the sides of the chassis coming up towards the front. And, um, that becomes one of the central sort of thematic elements 
for the the overall design and it becomes a part of the um, process for determining how to do everything from where we are now towards the back of the car because we've set up this idea that we don't have to have these flowing seamless profiles we can have these transitions and have these distinct parts of the vehicle or the ship that just sort of sit on their own and work together with the other parts to like i say convey more than just the sum of the parts so we're going to have this quarter panel like shift they're going to be a little bit bigger and a little bit beefier certainly not the seamless transitions and then that will inform the rest of the design going back so we have more opportunities to do curves and unique things and have little stories being told at various different places around the hull and then looking at the whole thing together hopefully it'll come together the way that i have in my head because i think that'll be pretty cool but for now we still have to make all the triangles fit together the way that they're supposed to and you can see this is this is around the point where I was starting to get that feeling that things were not behaving the way they used to and I couldn't necessarily put together why but we'll get there <laughs> it's not going to be that bad now despite all that talk about things that weren't necessarily working and the, the learning that we had to do in order to start uh, getting around that there are some things that just work extremely well and this is kind of an example coming up here of one of those is we started that transition to the quarter panel section the hood is done the front grille section is done the front bumper is mostly done and now we're doing that sort of transition and it starts at the top along the quarter panel you can see we put in the backer blocks bang 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 and then we switch to the outside corners bang 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 and then the inside corners bang 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 done that to me is sort of how i expect to be able to do most of the building in the future anywhere we're working doesn't matter what we're doing that sort of thing once we have the familiarity with the system how to lay everything out so that things just sort of flow the way that they just did in that top section i, I can imagine having an outrageous amount of fun building things when you can put together soft elegant happy looking curves just like that quickly and easily um look really really looking forward to it so one of the things that i haven't looked into yet is um ideas on the placement for things like generators and um anything interior that you would put in inside a ship because you obviously don't want it dangling on the outside of the ship where it's an easy target and how that relates to the rest of the design around those pieces. Do you build the ship with a solid core? Do we build them with kind of a little bit of protection here and there on the interior and then rely on the outer hull for the majority of the protection? I kind of get the impression that it'll be a mix of different things in different scenarios because if we were to fill in the interior of these ships, uh, I, I kind of expect that that would have a not at all positive impact on the performance of them, their acceleration, their handling, things of that nature but at the same time if we've got these thin sort of outer walls that are just designed to show uh, a particular contour or a particular profile on the outside of the ship and don't offer a whole lot of protection that will suffer for that at some point in the future as well so before we get too carried away with the placement of the various different things I just kind of want to have a little bit of a primer for myself in terms of what I can expect uh, based on where I might put things and what I might put around them and that way when we release the, bl the blueprint hopefully the ship is viable from the very beginning and it's not one of this, those things that looks pretty and we find out a week after the blueprint goes out that it's actually completely useless <laughs> so that's uh, something that I'll be looking into and try and get that sorted this is kind of the part here where I started to feel like things um, we went through that sort of phase I guess you could say where things weren't working uh, coming down doing the the front grill section the bottom area the where the bumper might be and having a hard time getting things to work the way that I wanted them to and then realizing okay maybe we should be giving a little bit more thought to specifically what we're placing behind the blocks that are defining the outside of the ship and as you can see the the top is still happening very very quickly but even this front 
section is coming together more quickly as well. Because we've got that little bit of extra thought going into the process of deciding uh, everything that we're placing and not just the outer hull blocks. So the design that we've got here and the lines that we're producing here, we're going to be pushing them basically all the way through to the back of the ship and kind of keeping that whole idea of individual profiles coming together to produce something that's just hopefully really, really cool and interesting. And then we'll work on getting everything in place so that it's actually also a functional ship and cross our fingers that a reasonable Joe could um, expect to be able to produce the blueprint in a survival world without having to spend the next 11 years of their life grinding for their materials. So we're just about done with this front section. We're At this point, we're just transitioning around to the side. And the whole idea here is I don't want to terminate this in a 90 degree sort of angle and just shoot down the side. That would be kind of a disappointment at this stage of the game to take that particular route. But at the same time, I don't want to drag out the process of looking at the, the profile. I want it to be um, still curved, still elegant, but um, not drawn out, which is very, very sometimes easy to get confused between the two. You can see we're just working with a very narrow, narrow strip now. Um, and that's going to provide us with that transition instead of just uh, a complete change of direction. And then we're setting ourselves up so that we can pick up exactly where we left off in the next episode. The next episode will be about the sides and the underside of the forward section of the ship. Getting everything together the way that I have in mind as best that I can. And then moving on towards the very back of the ship. So there's... Um, Hopefully, a lot of interesting things still to come that you'll be able to see as the build progresses. And then by the time we get around to the, the business of placing stuff inside, like I say, we'll have um, at least a little bit of background knowledge so that we can make some reasonably wise decisions about how we make that happen. And we'll kind of go from there. I was looking at the inventory and what I was provided at the very beginning of the game for this whole process and I've got basically two mining lasers and two guns that we'll be able to mount to this so it's not going to be uh, much of a fighter but it should hopefully give us a pretty good start and get us uh, squared away so we can travel around and fight some things and mine some things and, and do stuff of that nature so if you want to be notified about the next and future episodes in this and other series the easiest way to do that is to subscribe to my channel or follow me on social media links for social media are always in the information section below the video feel free to leave your comments and feedback thanks for watching guys and take care